Hey gung-ho ecoins, I am about to hop in the car and head over to Beechwood Canyon where we're gonna learn about gray water systems. So follow me. My name is Johnny. I built my first gray water system in 1993. Hi, I'm Cameron. I use the principles of permaculture to design and maintain gray water systems in household environments in Los Angeles. We're in a garden, our garden, in the heart of an urban center of Los Angeles. It's green because of gray water. I've been working with John um, here and at a couple of other sites uh, in this area since uh, April. What is gray water? Gray water is water that's typically taken from a municipal source, used and then reused in the landscape. The main source of gray water here is the shower. At our other property, we are gray water sourcing from the showers, the washing machine, and the bathroom sinks, not the kitchen sink. It's not fresh, it's not black water. Black water would be stuff that contains human feces. Laundry to landscape is a term that's used a lot. It's one of the most simple insulation methods. Often there's just a three-way valve that can be installed so that if you're using bleach, you wouldn't want to send that into the landscape. When there was four people living here, we had probably about 50, 60 gallons a day flowing into the garden. So John, why did you want to put in a gray water system anyway? Like, what was the point of that? I'm a gardener and I use water. I use a lot of it. We're interested in growing food here. Water costs and water is wasted. When we realized how much water was just flowing out of the, the shower that we could be using, that inspired me to built a trap for it. It's rather easy to install a gray water system in your home. The plumbing is the only tricky part, which you can have a plumber do. If you have any experience with PVC, you can get under your house and do it yourself. I simply rerouted the water that was running from the bottom of the shower, which would normally go into the six inch pipe and join with the toilet water. Before it gets to the toilet water, we branch it and create a separate pipe that runs out to the garden. And the way it's working is you can see here that it just flows into a real gravel pit with sand. And then it runs into this, uh, these planter boxes that are filled with bioremediating plants. So they're basically wetland plants like Pacarus, Philodendron, willows. Beautiful willows that love water and they, their job is to clean the water. So it's actually very clean when it comes out the other end. So these are some of the things that we're sticking in our gray water system. They are macro, macrophytic. So what does macrophytic mean? It means that they can survive in a, in a water environment. It's coming directly out of the shower here. And then, so there's kind of two actions of filtration that are going on. One being just the mechanical action that is provided by the gravel where it removes the sediment because the particles get trapped by, by the gravel. As it moves into this, this is where the more biological filtration is going on, where the plant roots are making use of the dead skin cells and the nutrients that are coming out of the, the soaps that are used in the shower there. Is that safe for plants? Uh, yes, yes, so that's a good point to uh, to touch on here is that there's there's kind of confusion I think in people's minds about the idea that um, that whatever is present in the water is then going to be present in whatever food that that produces. The plants don't absorb that and then uh, and then put that out in their in their biomass. Like there's microbial action in the soil that's breaking that stuff down. You can use gray water safely. We have the great advantage of being on a hillside. Gravity works for us to take the gray water from the house to the garden. I've put in gray water systems on flat lands and the only difference is you need a pump. The three-way valve is an alternative. I don't have a three-way valve. I trust that everyone in my house uses safe detergents. Seventh generation and in the shower we use uh, Dr. Bronner's. So here's where it comes out of the four tiers of garden and runs into a pipe that goes into a catchment system. Uh, this is rainwater. This isn't part of this system. So we have rainwater also being collected from the rooftop. And that's gathered in a system that can be either distributed directly into these barrels, which it fills this one and then it runs and fills this one. 
overflow goes into the garden or into about a 450 gallon storage tank. So it's nice being in this hillside area where the house is probably the highest point of elevation in the system because then you have this embodied energy, this stored energy of water high in the system and you can allow the gravity to take it down. Everything below this is just terraced so that we can grow food down this way and passively move this water down in the system. Yeah, we have uh, gravity working for us. You know, living in LA where water is already scarce, they say that half of the domestic use of water is for landscaping. And if I could eliminate half of my water use by reusing the water that is already being used, just use the water twice, the plants love it. It's fun. It's uh, like rainwater. Like most gardeners will notice the difference between, you know, hose water and uh, rainwater. The rain, plants just love. It's flowing from the system down here into this flexible system that we can move around as needed. The water flows from there to here. The idea was to be able to get gray water anywhere in the garden. This soil was covered in concrete two years ago. And what our job has been is to bring it to life. Our goal is to create a canopy of deciduous fruiting trees and we've got avocado, we've got mulberry, four persimmons back there, we've got guavas here and there, we've got apricot, we've got plum, passion vines, and the idea is to create a canopy above where the vegetables can grow below. I think we've reduced our uh, use of city water in the garden by at least 50%, and I'd be willing to guess more more than 60 70 percent what's the statistic on uh, la household water usage uh, they estimate that for each member of the household that they use around uh, 40 gallons of water per day uh, so you're overly compensating for that so if the average uh, resident of Los Angeles uses 40 gallons of water per day. Half of that, at least, is gray water usable, water that comes from your shower or your washing machine. One of the advantages of gray water, I think, is becoming more sensitive to waste. Becoming sensitive to our waste streams is really a, a big part of gray water. It's, a, it's, it's as much a consciousness as a physical practice. I really encourage people to, to look into these simple systems and there's a kind of empowerment that comes with that of just realizing that you have personal resiliency that your security is kind of between your ears because you understand the components of a system and that you can gain proficiency and understand something about plumbing which might seem like a totally opaque trade to you through this process of becoming more engaged with your landscape and with your own resource use and reuse yeah well said it's just more interesting. It makes me feel kind of more engaged with these, these banal pieces of life, like doing your laundry or taking a shower. Um, if that can, can have another yield, uh, I think it makes you feel, I don't know, cl closer to yourself in some way. There's a corporate takeover of just about every aspect of our lives. And I hesitate to use the word revolution, but Building a gray water system is outside the broken system of the way we use water. So I just got back from meeting with John and Cameron and man, do I covet their garden. <laughs> Learned a lot about gray water and how, you know, how really empowered it feels to um, reclaim the cycles of nature and gardening for ourselves in the way that nature intended. All right, peace out people.